harvest is completed. Great yields for some, medium for others, not so good depending upon where you were at uh, with uh, all the rain that came in different parts of the Corn Belt. I'm in Boone, Iowa, central Iowa. Pretty good uh, in this area. Uh, we have individuals uh, in the central part of Iowa that had some of the best corn yields they've had. But now the big question is, it's that time of the year with harvest being concluded is, how much fertility do I go back on these fields? Do, how, how much potassium should I apply? I don't like where uh, the market prices are with, uh, with corn. Potassium is so critical uh, as a primary nutrient to fill that ear, but it also has some properties that help with what we call biotic stresses. And what I'm talking about biotic stresses are those pathogens like insects, uh, viruses, uh, uh, bacterial, uh, fungal type diseases. And we saw major differences this year in, in hybrids uh, with uh, things like tar spot uh, coming in. And some of the research that I found, number one, showed that when you have fields with good levels of potassium versus those with lower levels of potassium, the, areas, the fields with good levels of potassium built the best cellular wall structure for that plant, the stalks and the leaves, which helps prevent pathogens from being able to penetrate uh, that leaf surface uh, and causing uh, difficulty, and, and actually insects as well. Um, when you look at situations like um, spore-borne diseases, potassium regulates the opening and the closing of the stomates of our corn plants. And when it recognizes that there is a pathogen, a spore coming in, if it closes really quickly and in fields with good levels of potassium, that's what the research has shown, you have a better chance to fight off those, those pathogens. We've often wondered why do some hybrids seem to have more susceptibility than others? Well, it could be genetics, a lot of times it is, but it also could be in response to um, our fertility levels. You know, I've been doing this for 40 some years, 45 actually, and I've always found that those fields with the best soil test reports with nutrients at, uh, at the maximum levels, uh, optimal levels, had a much better chance to fight off some of the different stresses that occurred, including abiotic stresses, which are how hot is it, how cold is it, how much rain did we get, do we have drought stress. I want to put on some producer meetings um, later on this winter to dive into this in a little bit deeper than what this couple two to three minute stretch is. But one thing I will tell you is that potassium is going to be critical. Not only what we normally think of is how much potassium it takes to build a corn plant to grow 250 bushel corn, it's a lot, but also to prevent uh, and to help us in some of these biotic and abiotic stresses uh, that we deal with, um, with insect pests, with disease pests, and, and the weather that we can't control. So stay tuned and um, we will uh, be working with, uh, with the Landis, um, salespeople and putting together meetings to talk about the important role of potassium. You still have time to make sure that you've got the levels you need heading into 2025. With that, Gam Yorkland, Linus Agronomist, signing off.